Tom. To seal the testimony of this book and the Book of Mormon, we announce the martyrdom of Joseph Smith the prophet and Hiram Smith the patriarch. Joseph Smith, the prophet and seer of the Lord, has done more, save Jesus only, for the salvation of men in this world than any other man that ever lived in it. I know Joseph Smith to be a true prophet. I'm so happy that he had that great faith to go through whatever thing he went through and that he would stand worthy for Father in heaven to reveal whatever he had to reveal to him for us in our day. Though the prophet Joseph Smith lived over 150 years ago, the things that he brought to pass then still influences my life now. Joseph, I am willing to forget we ever had this conversation if you will never speak of such blasphemous things again. But it's true. God does not speak to men in this age, not to you, not to anyone. But he does. He spoke to me. Even if God were to speak to someone in this day, and I'm not saying he would, why would he choose to speak to a common farm boy like you? I suppose because I sought him out. Joseph, listen to what you're saying. It's madness. It's the talk of the devil. There are no revelations or visions in these days. Such things ended with the apostles. But it's true, sir. As I live, it is true. God the Father and his son Jesus Christ appeared to me. This is heresy. Oh! And I will hear no more of it. Mark my words, Joseph Smith. No good will come from this. I had actually seen a light. And in the midst of that light, I saw two personages, and they did, in reality, speak to me. And though I was hated and persecuted for saying that I had seen a vision, yet it was true. I knew it, and I knew that God knew it. I know that the heavens being closed and then being reopened, it's really a powerful testimony that we can return to live with Him. And it made it clear about the Trinity, that the Godhead made it clear their roles as three separate individuals. I'll... As we learn about the nature of God and that he has a body of flesh and bone, his son also, and that they visited Joseph Smith, this makes me think about the great love they have and it gives me the surety that they will answer our prayers. were days never to be forgotten. I will go and do to sit under the sound of a voice dictated by the inspiration of heaven. Day after day I continued uninterrupted to write from his mouth as he translated the history or record called the Book of Mormon. My heart was there from the time I became acquainted with the Book of Mormon. From the first time I read this volume of volumes, even until now, I have been struck with a kind of sacred joy. What a wonderful volume. What a glorious treasure. By that book, I learned the right way to God. 
by that book, I received the fullness of the everlasting gospel. I found the new covenant, a key to the holy prophets, and by that book began to unfold the mysteries of God, and I was made glad. The knowledge it contains is desirable. The doctrine it teaches is from the blessed Savior. It's just a miracle that Joseph Smith could translate that it's just for us so that we could be able to have these feelings every day. And Joseph Smith translated the Book of Mormon so that I could do better in school, so I could do better with my friends, and that our family life could go better. Every time I am down or I have lost confidence in myself, or when my heart is hard or troubled, my friends always tell me to read some part of the Book of Mormon. When I then read the Book of Mormon, I realize that I am a child of God, that I have worth, and that there's also a significance to my being here now. On a certain day, Oliver and I went into the woods to pray and inquire of the Lord respecting baptism for the remission of sins that we found mentioned in the translation of the plates. Upon you, my fellow servants, in the name of Messiah, I confer the priesthood of Aaron, which holds the keys of the ministering of angels and of the gospel of repentance and of baptism by immersion for the remission of sins. If I didn't hold the priesthood, my behavior would be a lot different because there was a time in my life before I joined the church that I didn't have the priesthood in my life. And um, my, the things I said, the things I did, are a lot different from the things I say and do now. We are all blessed daily because of the priesthood. In the future, I would like my husband to be a worthy priesthood holder who can bless my children, and he can help our family to be worthy to return to our Heavenly Father. Those keys were restored to Joseph Smith, and uh, he baptized Oliver Cowdery. And since then, it has been practiced, and thousands of people's lives have been changed. Thanks to this great ordinance, we can put our lives in order, and we have hope that we can be clean again. We now call upon you to manifest whether you accept us to be your teachers in the things of the kingdom of God. We also call upon you to manifest your consent that we proceed to organize as a church according We to attended the to our business of organizing according to the laws of the land. The church acknowledging us six elders as their ministers. This church is the most glorious fabric that was ever established upon the face of the earth. Because it is God's church, it is the church of Jesus Christ, unparalleled by anything else. Such is the church and such the organization that the prophet Joseph was the means in the hands of God of restoring once more to the earth. He laid the foundation of this work. In the gospel, I have found the source of help. Its organization is perfect because it is the Church of Christ. I know that I am a part of this organization, and there are many people like me throughout the world. The veil was taken from our minds. I have accepted this house, and my name shall be here, and I will manifest myself to my people in mercy in this house. And Moses appeared unto us and committed unto us the keys of the gathering of Israel. After this, Elias appeared and committed the dispensation of the gospel of Abraham. After this vision had closed, 
another great and glorious vision burst upon us. Elijah the prophet. Therefore, the keys of this dispensation are committed into your hands. Joseph Smith restored those keys. I don't know they weren't his keys. He was a righteous and willing instrument in the hand of the Lord that brought those blessings into my life so that I can have those blessings at my fingertips and readily and easily exercise them. Amen. Baptism for the dead was much dwelt upon. The absolute necessity of the completion of the temple, that the ordinances might be administered to the living and through the living for the dead. I ask, who understood anything about these things until Joseph, being inspired from on high, touched the key and unlocked the door of these mysteries of the kingdom? To be able to go to the temple and to do the work for my, for my dead ancestors was a great experience for me. And for the first time in my life, I realized what it was to be a savior on Mount Zion. The Apostle Paul has written, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. It was Joseph Smith who taught me how to prize the enduring relationships of father and mother, husband and wife, of brother and sister, son and daughter, and that the refined sympathies and affections which endeared us to each other emanated from the foundation of eternal love. It was from him we learned that we might cultivate these affections and grow and increase in the same to all eternity. While the result of our endless union would be an offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven. I come from a family of nine kids and five are adopted. And so I've been to the temple five times to be sealed with my family. And to me, there's nothing greater than to be in the temple with your family, to know that you're forever a family and that you'll be together all the time. I remember the last speech that Joseph gave us before his death. These principles and this priesthood and power belong to this great and last dispensation, which God in heaven has set his hand to establish in the earth. I have sealed upon your heads every key, every power, every principle which the Lord has sealed upon my head. The keys of the kingdom are planted on the earth to be taken away no more forever. Brethren, you have many storms to pass through and many, many sore trials await you. If you are called upon to lay down your lives, die like men, should you have to walk right into danger and even the jaws of death, fear no evil. Jesus Christ has died for you. Now, round up your shoulders and stand under it like men. For the Lord is going to let me rest a while. To know that Joseph Smith restored the gospel, that I could have that in my life, is a blessing that I really feel unworthy to have. I want to keep myself clean. I want to keep myself pure. And I want to live with God again. And I know that through Joseph Smith, because of him, and through Christ, I can return and live with God again. I wish I were able to see the prophet Joseph Smith. If I were granted the opportunity to personally thank him, I would thank him for his courage, long suffering, and patience which brought forth all of these things to the earth, that my family and I may be able to receive salvation. 
The first thing I'd say to him is thank you for all the things which he has done for me and for my family. And then I think that the second thing I would do is take him to a general conference of the church and I would show him all the faces of all the people who have been influenced uh, by his acts and his efforts. He would see millions and millions of people influenced by the church. If Joseph Smith was here today, and if I could talk to him face to face, I would tell him how much I love him and how grateful I am for what he did for us and for making himself worthy to help restore the true Church of Jesus Christ. I am thankful to Joseph Smith and I can say I love him very much. Joseph lived great and he died great in the eyes of God and his people. And like most of the Lord's anointed in ancient times, has sealed his mission and his works with his own blood. No unhallowed hand can stop the work from progressing. Persecutions may rage, mobs may combine, but the truth of God will go forth boldly, nobly, and independent till it has penetrated every continent, visited every clime, swept every country, and sounded in every ear till the purposes of God shall be accomplished and the great Jehovah shall say, the work is done. We welcome you to this great conference. There's some 6,000 of us here in the tabernacle and millions more in halls across the world. We are all one great family. We have one Lord, one faith, one baptism. In fulfillment of the words of Peter, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. 